We're having a look at the Sweden Dev Diary today that was released yesterday, last night. A bit slack on this one. But this one is all about balls. And I'm not even joking. Look at this. Balls. Ball bearings. Uh, Sweden apparently exported a lot of ball bearings back in the day. Had no idea. I didn't know that Sweden was such an expert country when it came to balls. Having, like, just getting them the right shape, the right smoothness. And it seems like the whole world wants Sweden's balls. I really rate that as a historical event that's come up. And I think that plenty more ball jokes to come. Let's look through the dev diary. Today, they've done a very similar thing to what they did with Finland the other week, where it's basically their industrial and military trees and also their democratic focus. They say democratic, not historical, because they've basically given you avenues where you can still join the war, even on the historical path, but the AI will be like shepherded away from those options. So I think that's really cool because some countries like South America, you pretty much have to go fascist or communist to do anything, more options in there to play with. You complete the first focus and, and you can choose from four different leaders. Yeah, you basically have all the different options. And look at the eyebrows on this guy. And pretty good perks and bonuses and stuff too. The unique things about uh, Sweden are a couple of their national spirits. So the Hunger Shield or uh, Hunger Scold, I think that'd be pronounced. But yeah, essentially in the First World War, Sweden was embargoed by the Entente because they were just still shipping supplies to Germany. And that's led them to have a bit of like a bit of unease when World War II comes around because they don't want a repeat of the same situation of like not getting any food in from the allies and stuff. So that's represented by this national spirit where you can get strikes if your stability drops below 65 percent, as we'll see later down the line, the different national like the different focuses you do will add or subtract stability depending on what you do so basically you have to toe the line between keeping your stability right while trying to mobilize a sweden if you want to join the war which i think is an interesting way to do it so one thing i did want to touch on with this actually is like the historical aspect of this right so hjalmar hammerskold probably butchering that name apologies so he was like the prime minister at the time during the first world war hjalmar hammerskold is the father of Dag Hammarskjöld, who was the general secretary of, or the um, secretary general, sorry, of the United Nations. The reason why this was familiar to me, if you guys have seen the siege of Jadotsville or Jadotsville, his plane got shot down. Probably, potentially, possibly, maybe, probably. But his fucking plane was shot down while he was flying from uh, Congo to Rhodesia to try and put an end to the, like, Congo situation that was happening. Basically a civil war. Uh, it, it was a civil war. It wasn't basically a civil war. But he basically flew there to sort this out. And then we don't know who. We don't know why. His fucking plane was shot down, man. And still to this day, there hasn't been a conclusive investigation to find out what happened. It's just been stonewalled by intelligence agencies from each side. The biggest, I'm not really a conspiracy person, but we're watching the siege of Jadotsville. It shows his plane getting shot down. And I'm sitting there like, there's no way this fucking happened. It legitimately happened, which is just mental that this happened in like, in, it happened in like the 661 or 62 or something. I'll actually link in the description, the, uh, biographics video on it with Simon Whistler. It covers him off in great detail. But yeah, I thought that was a cool little uh, cool little historical tangent to show you guys. Anyway, um, the other one is the Falkomet. I don't know. That's another national spirit. And basically that is uh, a bunch of like social welfare policies, which help your civilian industry, but it does make it harder for you to mobilize. The way they've implemented this into the game, if the folk met stays intact, you've got a less chance of getting strikes. It helps keep your stability up and protect you against that. But depending on what focuses you do, it'll increase your war support, increase your uh, military and uh, your military factory construction and all that, but it reduces your civilian speed and also decreases your stability. So basically the more you mobilize, the more the social welfare slides 
and goes more towards your military capacity. And the lower your stability gets, the more antsy your people get. I think it's actually quite cool. Like looking through some of these focuses as well, this is the main democratic historical tree that you can go through. Um, you can see that you can kind of take it on either side. We're not going to go through every single one, but they basically explained it where the, the left side is kind of more like social democratic, like more liberal kind of focuses and policies and stuff. So that will increase your stability and make it harder for you to mobilize. On the right side, that's sort of more like conservative sliding towards that like fascist scale, I guess. Uh, and then that's gonna make your mobilization easier, but reduce your stability. So even things like having a state paid vacation versus private vacations, I'm assuming that would be like issued by your employer and there's no restrictions on that. Um, so yeah, we basically got late stage capitalism and whatever we would all like to be in, I guess. Basically think of it like you, you're kind of playing the balancing act. So you might need to make concessions here and there. We touched on the bowls. Another unique thing to Sweden that they've included are flashpoints. And these are basically going to be your like prompts in a historical playthrough to like where if you're a player, you can then join the war. For example, this is one of the historical events that actually happened where the Soviets bombed part of Sweden. No one died or anything. You can say that like, oh, there's not much to be gained or we can be cautious, like we don't want to provoke them, we can be cautious, or you can like beat your chest and sort of, you know, demand reparations from the Soviets. And then the Soviets will get an event being like, nah, fuck them kids, like fuck Sweden. Like they like, we can't look weak to the allies and shit. We didn't do it. And then if they do that, then you can go back to them as Sweden again and be like, pull your head in mate. Like, fucking admit what you admit what you did is wrong give us some shit and we'll leave you alone <laughs> the soviets can come back again and be like fuck you boy we ain't doing shit and then uh then you can go to war so yeah it's kind of cool basically it's like talking mad smack with the soviets an avenue to join the war democratically is quite fun um and also like you and like you backing finland in their winter war kind of thing i'm keen for the achievements that'll come out of that and then we've got a bit more info on like the military branch so if we blow this up here Looks like you got all your naval stuff over here, like your air force, some like tanks, motorized sort of focuses, uh, and then your army. You don't just get military factories for these. You're gonna pretty much get like your national spirits, which are gonna be adjusted from these. So it's think of it like strengthening, strengthening your nation without just giving you more mills, which is kind of like, I think that's more interesting than just straight up industrial power. Better soldiers doing more with less sort of thing. I find that kind of gameplay quite fun. Basically, your military focuses are locked behind war support uh, or having 17 mils as well. It's adding like a neat little balancing act there between your stability and those strikes you can get super easily versus trying to get your war support up and mobilize. So some strats like you might have to be sending some attaches, doing the war propaganda, things like that uh, to try and get your industry churning. Cool things here about like the Bofors, uh, like the Bofors designer. Again, the military industrial organizations are coming and this is actually probably better than the Finland example they gave us as well. It's cool that you can like specialize in that sort of thing, follow along the historical trails, all that. And then you do have options in the Navy path to like buy British ships and stuff. This focus is kind of cool. It gives you a 60% completed battleship. I would love for more stuff like this to come in like future countries focuses, especially as miners, because a lot of the time you're playing as a major, your navy is strong because you have all of the capital ships already. As a smaller country, you can't really overtake the British's fleet just by production. It's not really that feasible in game. So I think focuses that give you a partially completed ship and incentivize you to invest into that is cool. You know, rewards you for going down that naval path a bit more than just building dockyards, you know. We also have the Winter War. This is tied into Sweden as well. Obviously, Finland is like the main player with the Soviets in the Winter War. However, that obviously affects Sweden because they're right next door. So you have a couple of options here. You can send volunteers basically and send them help and aid you can try to nick their little islands away from them um or you can just go all in total war and join them which is sick again if you manage to push the soviets back and take leningrad then they'll get this decision pop up they basically have to peace out with you or they take huge huge debuffs I like this. I think this is all fun. Sweden seems like it'll be a very fun country to play. Not necessarily a lot of risk either. So they've literally added Miss Frizzle and the magic school bus into this. Uh, speaking of dropping, that's not a bad idea, Ralphie. 
take chances, make mistakes. That's literally a live look at the Swedish paratroopers going into Cat Berlin. Not literally Miss Frizzle, although the thought of it is hilarious. The historical context of this, apparently, is the Swedish government or military or something had like a mobile command center, which were these buses, which they were just going to book it out into the bush and hide from the Germans if they got invaded. In game, you can move your headquarters around. And uh, if, you're, if the state your headquarters is in gets overrun, your leader is captured and killed, which is cool. That's a cool little feature. That's fun and like an, an interesting little thing to play with. Anyway, and there's also a bunch of stuff here for the Nordic Defense Council. This looks like it's all stuff to help you liberate the rest of the Scandinavian. It's not really a continent, but like the other Scandinavian countries after they've been invaded. You can even form like the Nordic Defense Council and basically become one big hegemony. I don't know if these guys will act as like puppets or what the go is. It's a nice reward for liberating all of your neighbors and stuff. What else we got? There's a bunch of other like late game focuses they've added in, which who needs Road to 56, honestly? Like this is this is also cool that like, they're putting in thought to like what would happen post World War II. You can have a bit of a stab at uh, the Soviets. Like imagine if Sweden were the ones to start World War III. I don't really get what this is about. The, basically, they're saying that this is like tying into the special forces rework, which we still haven't really seen anything about. So I'm keen for that dev diary to see a bit more. Um, speaks for itself, honestly. There's going to be a bunch of resource changes. They want to increase Germany's reliance on foreign trade, which is what they had to do historically. Like, it's kind of like a balancing thing for Germany. I don't know if they need it, seeing as right now the AI Germany like will never beat the Soviets. Although I guess that's kind of historical. Yeah, you can see here, like this is what it's going to be like in the new DLC, Sweden. They're getting not only a bit of extra steel, but a heap of extra aluminium. And that is aluminium to you Americans too. It's not aluminum. That's wrong. It's aluminium. That's how it's pronounced in the Queen's English, which is correct English. Uh, so yeah, nice little changes there. That's pretty much the Sweden Dev Diary. I'm really keen to see all the historical parts when they come out. I don't know if they'll do Dev Diaries on it or it'll be one of those things where like they just sort of release that and then we check it out once they're available, once we can play the DLC. But yeah, let me know what you guys think it's going to be like, I mean, are you keen for this? I, I know a lot of people said they were really keen to play Finland and then Sweden in terms of their preferences. So yeah, give me a shout what you guys reckon and thanks for watching.